In Mozambique, we look at the liberation struggle against Portuguese colonialism that was done by young people. And so they fought with arms, a liberation struggle against the colonial empire, and they won and they, we had the independence. That's a big thing. Or for example, the Soweto uprisings in South Africa when young people confronted the apartheid educational system and made a big push in the, in the ANC uh, struggle against apartheid and created a new momentum in the, in the history of that struggle. Or for example, the liberation movement in Zimbabwe and, uh, and other instances in which young people took a fundamental role. Or even if we remember the Lumumbas of this, uh, of this continent, uh, Cabral, they were all young when they, Nkrumah, they were all young when they really changed uh, the course of history in their countries. But I think it's also important to know that young people are also changing society on an everyday basis and in day daily actions. If we're just waiting for those peak moments, they happen once in a while in history. But it doesn't mean that young people are apolitical, that they don't care. And they are changing their societies with new ideas. And slowly, maybe it's things that you don't see immediately, but society changes a little bit every day. New ideas that are accepted, new ideas that are acquired, new systems that are created. The more young people are educated, the more they bring into their communities, etc., through their associations, through sports, through music, through a lot of other means. And all those, if we look at this kind of more encompassing notion of political participation, all those things are things that contribute to this notion of participatory citizenship, of political participation, and drive change. Social change is gen it's not just, sh should not be measured by the dramatic, uh, radical change. But that is the change that uh, gradually happens in an everyday basis. And I'm sure you, in your own experience, you will be able to point out changes that happen. Yesterday, for example, on issues of intimacy, we were talking about how change in social relationships are happening in the way young people are conceiving intimate relations, marriage, etc. There are more and more women not getting married. There are more, and this is slowly being accepted by society. And there are many factors that help society change gradually. But it's because more women are being educated, more women are having a space to uh, uh, make their own decisions. They are heads of households, they are running their own families. Uh, more men probably are depending on women. Uh, patterns of, of relationships uh, of what is masculinity, what is femininity is changing. For example, there was this interesting study on Sudan looking at Darfur and looking at how the war in Darfur was also linked to the fact that uh, the, 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 um, the, the nomads uh, in, in Darfur could no longer continue to uh, move from one place to another and had to become sedentary. But they didn't know how to deal with becoming sedentary. So by being there and not being able to move, they would be easily taken into the Mujahideen and participate in the war. And how war and notions of masculinity, because men would have to go out and hunt. But when there was no possibilities of hunting, the war became another form of creating masculinity. So it's a change in society. So there are a number of environmental factors, political factors, social factors, but also things that happen with education, with uh, uh, new ideas, with uh, um, new forms of communication and information that create slowly gradual change in society. And also those things have to do with youth participation. And uh, associations of various kinds have been there. 
being the religious associations, being the uh, social uh, sports associations, being music and popular culture, murals, paintings, theater, and there is also a social critique that is very much the domain of young people in popular culture. And here I highlight in the lecture the issue of hip hop. And the Mwenda would be the person to talk about this because he wrote an entire book just on that issue. And I just give you a few um, extracts from lyrics of hip hop songs to show how engaged those hip hop songs are. Because there is this tendency to dismiss them. Oh, it's just an appropriation of foreign ideas. They try to be like the Americans. There is nothing in the heads of these young people. But they have really appropriated a genre and made it their own. And the things that they talk about, it's about their everyday life. There is the songs by Lansana Conte, uh, Lansana Sharif in uh, uh, Sierra Leone. His artistic name is Teddy Bongo. There's the songs of El General, the Tunisian rapper, the songs of Azagaya, the songs of Kurgi, the songs of uh, many Ugandan, Kenyan, you know, there are rappers everywhere. And it would be interesting to analyze the social critique that it is in there. And the young people, and they bring in masses and masses of young people. And maybe we were talking about the success of Yana Mar. Maybe it starts by the fact that the Kurgi, the rap group, were at the forefront of that movement. And they had a language that resonated with young people, the ele young electorate that they have ma managed to influence. And they have started long before. The Kurgi, I think they were um, established in the 80s. And their songs have been there for quite some time. And Yanamar is uh, 2000, 2011 or 2010. But the Kurgi has been there and people have been listening to their song. You know, uh, uh, Abdullah Nyang uh, from uh, Gaston Berger University, where some of you come from, in Saint Louis, he talks about the playing with the words uh, politics and chien and the politician as being this politician who is not really a true politician, kind of saying, you know, not good politicians. And this critique of the political that comes from young people. Oh, the No Condoleance, the song from uh, uh, Kurgi that has a kind of a play with words to, to show that uh, politicians are not credible, are not serious. Or uh, uh, Azagaya's critique of corruption directly on the, uh, on the Mozambican government and calling on young people to come out to the streets, etc. And um, also in South Africa, there is the Kwaito music. That it's true that in the majority, the Kwaito music is about girls and music and bars and drink, but there is also some political messages attached to some of the, the Kwaito uh, artists. And I was talking to Irmalinda during the break and we were talking about the Kuduru, which is a genre in Angola. And there is a social critique also associated to the Kuduru. And, the, and so all these aspects are part of this everyday life participation that can then generate those big moments. But those big moments happen when there is a confluence of energies. And that confluence is not created every day. But in every day, there is participation, there is engagement, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, um, a conscience of being part of a society, of have a set of obligations, but also a set of rights. So in a way, young people, when they say, we're not being given a chance, uh, they also understand that they have obligations. It's not that they just want to receive, 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 and not do anything. They understand that there is a both set of uh, uh, obligations and, uh, and, uh, and rights but the part of rights, they don't see that being fulfilled. And even in terms of political rights, there is the issue of being able to voice your ideas freely. In many societies, and you might know this, you might be, have been part of this, you cannot criticize the government. You cannot criticize politicians. 
some, in some cases, you can go to jail. You have many academics, African academics, who ended up being outside the country because they were, uh, in a way, uh, not prosecuted, but they were, um, how do you say, what is the word? Now only the Portuguese word comes to mind. They were, no, they were, um, um, anyway, doesn't matter. But they were not well seen, you know? They were kind of put aside and said, oh, we need to watch these guys, they talk too much. It's not that they were taken to court or prosecuted formally, but they were put in a kind of a black list, so to speak. They were not, but they, you know, not well regarded. And they knew that one day we will end up in jail. I better be out of here. And there are many cases, and I know some of them. You might know some. And uh, because there were no space for dissent voices. There were not space for critique and auto-critique. There were no space for uh, liberty of expression. Uh, today in Mozambique, anyone can criticize the president and nothing happens. And that's something that is positive. But what young people were telling me and say, okay, go ahead and criticize the president. Then tomorrow there is a, 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 um, applications for a job uh, at the national bank or something They'll say, oh, is that person, da, 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 you out of it. You know that once you open your mouth, you put your future in jeopardy. So people try to, you know, okay, I'm not going to jail, but also I don't want to, to uh, ruin my chances. And so the majority takes a kind of a middle ground and try not to burn bridges. So um, just to say that there is also that, uh, that sense of uh, not having civil liberties, of not having rights to express uh, oneself and voice uh, one's ideas and criticize openly. In some context, freedom of press, freedom of expression is really repressed, while in others there is this pretense of freedom, but in the end, there are always consequences associated to uh, being vocal about it. And that's why some of these rappers have been repressed and in jail. Azagaya, the rapper that I mentioned in Mozambique, has been in jail. The Kurgi has also been, they have also been uh, uh, repressed by the authorities, etc., uh, etc. Et so we see, we see that happen. So just to finish then, I just wanted to make two points. One is that, in fact, social change happens in everyday life actions like those, you know, the, uh, the associative work, participation in, in civil society movements, in popular culture, but also they can take this big moment in which people come out to the street and manage to harness the energy and the, 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 the power of the larger group to really make uh, uh, radical change, like it happened in Tunisia, there was uh, 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 the defeat of the dictatorship there, like it happened during the liberation wars in Mozambique, in which they defeated colonialism, or in Zimbabwe, or it happened here when Yanamar managed to harness the vote of the youth in bloc to create a new political dispensation in uh, Senegalese society. And I think I'll stop here so that it will give us some time to discuss.